And I think it's easier for the team too when there's an expectation set and consistency and we're giving them a guided way to do it. And if you are not learning something new every single day, that is a problem. I learn something new every single day. Let's focus on growth and not sales versus service. Hi, everybody, and welcome to our podcast today. I am happily here with Stephen and Bobby for our podcast on using renewal reviews as your cross-selling strategies in the insurance industry. I love cross-selling. You know what? Too. I don't think we focus enough on it and service people. I think sometimes we just kind of go right to what the client wants, do that, and then document it. Hello, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Hang up. So I think we as agency owners and agency staff, we need to realize that our customers are warm leads. We already have them there. They're warm leads. We can talk to them. We can ask them questions. And some of our documents that we have at Agency Performance Partners, uh, you can find them at agencyperformancepartners.com, have different tips and tricks how to walk through what questions to ask a client to get to basically those cross-sell questions. What do you guys see as importances of cross-selling? What do we find when we cross-sell? Or what are we missing when we don't cross-sell, basically? Ooh. Ooh, I got a good answer for this one. Okay. I love, I love to spread the message of I'm giving one experience to the client, their other agents giving them a different experience. What if they like the other experience better? Like, I don't want them to break up and leave me. So I want to control the whole account. If I'm good enough for one policy, I should be good enough for all of them. But I think we get stuck in this tunnel vision of. The person called for a home quote because they're closing in a week and the realtor or the mortgage person told them to call out. So we're doing it and we forget about the auto, the umbrella, the lights, the boats, the motorcycle, the business, or anything else that goes along with it. So we write the one policy and we never go back after it. So I think that the, the renewal reviews, again, are a great time to do that because we're trying to build value with our clients and we want them to have a great experience. And if they're having a great experience with us, why wouldn't they want us to look at their other policies? And then we can control the entire conversation. 100%. What about you, Bobby? What are we missing out on? I mean, I think you're missing out on a gold mine. I mean, I like to think about it like as a woman, sometimes I change my purse, you know, like I'll change the purse that I'm carrying and then I'll go back to that old purse and I find, you know, $20 stored away or $10 stored away. I mean, imagine. Like we have to think about this, like, oh, these are, this is that old piece of luggage, you know, that I've had just sitting in the corner of my closet and all of that time it's had this money just sitting in there waiting for me just to take advantage of it and find it. And so I think we've, we lose sight of the fact that, you know, we have this whole gold mine just sitting there in front of us. All we have to do is pick up the phone and call the person and discover those $20 bills, those $100 bills. They're sitting there. They're waiting for us to take advantage of them. That is a cool thought and a cool way to think of that. I never thought of it that way. That is super cool. Steven, it's probably shoes, right, Steven? You can see money in shoes. Bags, sunglasses. Pants. I like pants. In the washing machine. I do, I do like, you know, some nice things sometimes. Uh, and one of my case studies in the podcast, even, is about cross insurance that you used to work for. Mm -hmm. So what have you seen is the benefit for growth and retention for an agency by using this strategy with the renewal reviews and cross selling through them? Hold my water bottle, left top, right? Like I, <laughs> I love to say that if consulting ever becomes not the thing for me, my life passions change, which hopefully it never does. But if it does. I will go knock on a large agency's door and say, hi, I'm Steven. I'm here to cross sell your book for commission. And I can spend three years doing nothing but calling existing clients, writing business from an existing book of business and make hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars over that time in commission. Because it's our greatest asset and resource. And once we start thinking that way, we can really build our book of business. The more policy the client has with us, the less likely they are to leave. 
and the more forgiving they can be with rate. The auto might go up, but the home might be stable or the home might be stable, but the auto might go up. So we start bottom, bottom lining or looking at things overall. And it comes down to convenience. Like my agent only offers two carriers. There's carrier A, which I'm with, and there's carrier B that I don't qualify for. But they told me that's the rules of the game, right? Like if I like the service I receive at that agency, it's the rules that there are. And I can understand that. But when it comes to cross-selling, it's really building confidence and a relationship with the clients and the agency. I love, 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 again, cross-sells. Totally obsessed. Well, and I think, you know, sometimes we say, well, I asked the client if they wanted me to write their home when when they bought it from me and they said no. So now I'm never going to approach the subject again because I don't want to hear now again. Our circumstances change, right? Like just because I didn't qualify maybe for a home this year doesn't mean that next year I won't. Or, you know, maybe my circumstances have changed. And so we have to remember too that we have to be continually bringing that information to the forefront of the client because they're going to forget that we offer those things. And as their lives change, we need to be nimble and be able to change with them and make sure that we're constantly bringing that information to the forefront so that they are knowledgeable and aware of the services that we provide and that we remain focused on the growth of our agency. And I had a client or a client, uh, a person I was working with that, like, I asked a hundred people if they wanted an umbrella and every one of them said no. It just doesn't work. And I'm like, cool, let's pull some record a call. How were you selling? Right. Uh, and she literally was like, do you want an umbrella quote? And the client's like, no. Well, so what's an umbrella? Like, right. I mean, there I was no value. It. And I know we're going to talk about some <laughs> techniques and things in a moment but really i was like cool can you like explain to them what it does and then ask <laughs> yeah. or just fall parking in your head like umbrellas normally are not rocket science do they do they have the right limit are they clear then they probably qualify do we know what the ballpark should be for the monthly premium well, but i have three umbrellas in my coat closet that i don't use now <laughs> i was thinking that they're gonna think it's interesting in us why would i need an umbrella quote what is it's not raining outside well, it's like saying, do you want an inland marine? Right. Do you need fiber? Like the, the contractors are like, no, like I build things. But if you're like, mm-hmm. do you process credit cards on behalf of your client? Right. Yeah. Okay, great. You need this policy. Let me tell you more about it. I wanted to go back a little bit with the convenience. I don't think insurance agencies think right now about convenience. So I'd like to bring up that big company that we know that delivers stuff to our house is constantly... We love that company because it's convenient and we're loyal to that company because it is so convenient. So we want to remember that Gucci and the convenience (laughs) is important to our clients. And it doesn't necessarily mean Amazon. It could be Amazon. Yeah. That's where 90% of my shopping comes from now. Well, and, and, and I always think to myself, Do I want to go to Walmart or Target and go look for it, spend the time trying to find it when I can just pick up my phone and order it? That is convenient. So how can we, as insurance agency, be more convenient to our clients? And one of the ways is renewal reviews and using it as a cross-selling tool. And the more we use the these tools to build rapport with our clients, the more loyalty we're going to have because Our clients know our name and we know theirs. And that's convenient. That's loyalty all wrapped into one place. So we need to rethink the way that we do business. We need to make it convenient for our clients, whether that be through a web portal or an app. We need to do our renewal reviews with our clients to increase policies and increase loyalty because they know who we are and what we do. Next, we want to talk about needs-based analysis, explanation of various cross-selling techniques. So those techniques are kind of listed out. One of them is needs-based analysis with a client. Stephen, what's needs-based analysis with a client? I actually just had this conversation with an agent I was training. She's like, I am service. I am not sale. And I'm like, okay, but you're literally just asking them about a line of business while they're on the phone. That sale, I do service. I'm like, so if somebody gets a calls and says, oh, I just had a pool put in my backyard. She goes, well, I'm going to demand they get an umbrella. 
And I'm like, okay, but why? She goes, well, because they got a pool, so they have to have an umbrella. And I'm like, but you won't ask them about auto or home when it's monoline. She goes, well, because what if they say no? But if they have some, like, if they get a teenage driver, I make them get an umbrella. I'm like, so if it's a package account already, like auto home, then you just automatically, you're selling. Like, do you not understand that you're selling on a needs basis, right? If you hear the need, you're like, shut up. You have to have this. But we're not pushing for the need. By not doing that, are we really effectively doing the job that we're licensed to do? If I am actively ignoring my client's need, <laughs> am I really, am I really proclaimed? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I'm exposing them. I'm exposing myself. I'm exposing my agency. Yeah. The next one is customer segmentation and targeting. And I found this one with life insurance to be incredible. I would take customers' date of birth. I would figure out their ages. I would then figure out what words could I use with that age of a person to sell them life insurance. So what were the key words that I could use with that generation to convince them that they needed life insurance. Some of them, it was mortgage protection because they just bought a home. Some of them, it was, you know, college funds for their baby that they just had. Index UL for retirement. So you take the ages of your clients, you figure out what words work for them. Because if you tell a 23-year-old they need life insurance, it makes them think about death. And they're like, no, I don't need that. I'm I'm only 23 years old. You have to basically come up with different ways to sell different items to a customer. And who wants to talk about open-ended questions? Well, I mean, I think open-ended questions are the best source of information. If I can ask an open-ended question to a client, everybody wants to talk about themselves. Their favorite thing to do is talk about themselves and all the things that they have worked so hard to build. They're proud of those things. They want to share that information with us. And so the more open-ended questions we can ask, the more information we're going to get back. Sometimes it feels like we end up being, you know, counseling sessions for people. A lot of times, a lot of times as insurance people, we we're because we're so personally involved in, in their finances and in their lives, we get a lot of information back from them. But that opportunity then allows us to know, hey, they may have some of these other risks or there's potentially things that are coming down the pipeline that we need to be aware of. So, you know, maybe Mr. and Mrs. Jones are going out and they're looking at buying RBs this weekend. And that's going to be really great information for me to know so I can follow up after the holiday and say, hey, how'd that search go? I want to go with them. I love RBs. Me too. I have a huge question. What is the secret about what you do after you ask an open-ended question? Chip clip it. Silence. Silence is the secret. We need to ask open-ended questions, and then we need to be silent and allow the customer to answer. And we need to listen to their answer and not interrupt them. It's taken me a long time to learn that one. Sometimes I jump in because I'm afraid I'm going to forget something, but I finally figured it out. If I don't remember, it must not be that important. We all talk about bundling insurance policies or the package. Stephen said the package this morning instead of bundling. And I was like, that is a good way to say it. Instead of using the term, you know, we know that Progressive uses the bundling. But I think the package is a great way to refer to a client. Hey, this is a package deal. Then you're selling them all the policies in one. Hey, I've got this great package for you. So that is a great way to do it. And we know that there are some great discounts that come with that. And how important is regular communication with our clients? We can't be successful without it. Yeah. And, and I think now after COVID, we need to build those relationships back up, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. In this market, like we've got to, people need help. They need someone to talk to. They need a professional. We've got to elevate our game here. Like we are the professional. You know, when I make a doctor's appointment, if I'm having something serious going on, I need to speak with my doctor. I don't need to speak with the person who made my appointment. 
And so our clients need to speak with us. They need an evaluation on the health and wellness of their financial products right now. I have an example. And so that relationship is going to be so important. I have an exact example of what you just talked about. I took my son to an urgent care because he had vertigo. And the first thing they did is test him for COVID and flu. And lo and behold, he comes out positive for the flu. And this was month, this was about a year ago. They put him on Tamiflu. Guess what the reactions to Tamiflu are? Pretty Virgo. Oh. And he had I, it already and they made it worse. <laughs> and he was not getting better. And this is when he had his knee surgery, so he couldn't walk. So it was it was an awful time for him because it caused depression and everything else. Took him to his regular doctor. Regular doctor never even tested him for flu or COVID. Never questioned that, but was like, how in the world are, did they put him on Tamiflu when he already had the symptoms that Tamiflu causes? So the Tamiflu just doubled the symptoms and made him twice as bad as he already was. So because we didn't go to his normal doctor, that's the, the repercussions of that. So that regular communication leads us right into personalized recommendations and referrals. Make it personal. Tell them why they need it. Don't just be a broken record that's talking about generic things in a static way, like a little insurance robot. Well, and we know that everybody out there needs an auto policy and a property policy because they probably drive somewhere and they probably live somewhere. But if we keep the mindset of auto home or auto property and we don't start to dig and get to know these clients and what their needs really are. Are we doing a justice? Like a property policy, we could not ask them if they have a new roof, they could have a brand new roof and could be saving 10% because they have a new roof. But we have to be personalizing it, asking specific questions and making sure that we are cross-selling properly and communicating with our clients to make sure that we know what they have and they know what they're getting. So we educate them. Renewal reviews, we know that they're super powerful. And our renewal review sheet helps walk people through or agents through the renewal review sheet, which helps a great deal when it comes to, you know, a Thursday afternoon or a Friday afternoon, like we are today, we're in a Friday afternoon. You know, could I get on the phone with a client right now and remember all the discounts and remember to ask all the building report questions? Probably not. So Mm. this renewal review process and the form takes us through the steps that we need every single time we do a review. So that means every single customer gets our detailed attention and we can then prioritize and personalize the insurance coverage for these clients. It's it's a win-win. I mean, Stephen, how many, what was the reduction in calls into the agency you worked with that started to do the renewal reviews? I think that overall call volume actually dropped by about a third after the first year of doing it consistently. Right. Because clients like the the second time they hear from you, they're like, shut up. You called me again. And most of them were like, why are you calling me? I just talked to you. And you were like, no, it's been a year. And you're like, you call me every year. Yeah. That's the experience you should be receiving from your agent. Mm-hmm. Like, this is our promise to you that we're going to reach out every year consistently, once a year, just to check in. You need something else in the meantime, please call us. But I think it really helped alleviate some of that. And I think it's easier for the team, too, when there's an expectation set and consistency, and we're giving them a guided way to do it. We're giving them the scripts. We're giving them the things. We're giving them the talking points to ask about. And I think sometimes it just starts clicking with the team's head a little bit better because they're like, uh, like if you just tell them to ask these random questions, it doesn't make sense. But as you're going through the list, their little minds start working. And I don't mean that disrespectfully when I say little minds, but I just realized when I said that it's kind of disrespectful. Don't mean it that way. But their minds start really working and it starts exercising. They're learning a new skill. And it's that fail forward mentality, right? Like, well, that didn't quite work very well. Oops. But what can I do differently the next time to make it happen? Well, and I think sometimes we we little minds can sometimes mean closed down where they right. don't and that yes. open. I did mean like yeah. inferior or but right, like, of as course. Soon as I, said it, it, I was like no, well, not, not 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 open to change. And we we got a right. review the other day for a sales call that we did, and the review said, "Did you learn anything new?" And their answer was, "No, I've been in insurance thirty years." And if you are not learning something new every single day, that is a problem. I learn something new every single day. 
And that's my goal. My goal is to learn something new every day. So if you're not learning something new, then go work with somebody else or go find somebody else to talk to that's going to teach you something new. But also with carriers in this hard market, we're learning new things about this market all the time. So you can't really say that you're not learning anything new. So I think that's kind of a closed mindset and we need to be more open to change and, you know, changing with the industry, changing with the market and using cross sells and renewal reviews as as a strategy to get there. Well, and this is why I love those forms so much. And although we talk about it a lot in the sense that I want to be able to provide tools to someone, you know, on a Friday afternoon. Also, with this market, things are changing so rapidly right now that we can't expect our people to know what is happening, right? So if we can be using those forms as to power our people's knowledge, that's our source of truth. The form now becomes the source of truth. I don't have to go anywhere else. I don't have to think about did did X carrier change this endorsement to mm-hmm. do this or did, you know, what what is the script that I should say now because so-and-so changed their percentage to to this or whatever, right? So I think these become very powerful tools that now you can provide immediate change management to your internal staff too, as we're going through a lot of change in this market. And I think if you're an agency owner, uh, manager, or principal, you should have some requirements on your staff, at least to ask the question, if they have auto, do you rent or own your home? And if it's uh, if it's home, no auto, you know, where do you have your auto policy? I would love to quote that for you. Just simple questions that they need to ask in every call to basically try to cross some more because it helps the agency with growth. It helps the agency with retention. And there's no real downside to asking questions. And the customer can say no, but that means no right now. That doesn't mean that in six months when that policy is coming up for renewal. So if they say no, then you can say, hey, do you have any idea when your renewal is? Can I call you then? Because you're giving them the option and you're keeping that opportunity in that door open to do that cross sell later um, with that same customer. So well, uh, any- everyone at the agency can be focused on growth. Doesn't even have to be a licensed person, right? If if my receptionist answers the phone and sees that, hey, so-and-so has this opportunity available and I'm going to transfer that call to Therese, I'm going to let you know, you know, this person doesn't have a home. You might want to consider that. I've already asked them about it. They're They're willing to talk to you about it. So Let's focus on growth and not sales versus service. There is a newsflash there. Your receptionists that may not be licensed may know more about your client than the agent does because they're the ones who are they chit chat with them on the phone all the time and to make while they're on hold, right? I had a receptionist that was with the agency 10, 15 years and she would be like, who has the grandchild and this, that, and the other? And And I was like, wow, she knows more about the customer than we do. So yeah. we need to take advantage of that. So any mm-hmm. final thoughts about renewal reviews and cross-selling? Even if you just start and call one person, one's better than none. Mm-hmm. Consistency, yeah. like even if you just call one person a day. And if you yep. can get a hold of that list of customers, I worked for an exclusive agency and that company, that carrier would actually populate the list for you. Auto, no home, home, no auto. If you have access to those lists in your management system, oh my goodness, that's a gold mine. Mm-hmm. Go find that list and make those outbound phone calls to those customers and cross sell that book. Those are not cold leads that are warm because they're already customers. So make your name known to your clients, your customers. Make sure they know who you are. Use their names when you're talking to them. Make sure they know yours. And that's the end of today's podcast about renewal reviews, using them, using cross-selling as a cross-selling strategy. So thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Stephen, for joining me today. I appreciate your time and we'll see everybody later.